the net present value or NPV of a problem is what we're going to be looking at next. I'm going to take a moment and note, if you can see over here, that NPV is on our calculator. So that's an important thing to note. We're not going to be doing this by hand. The net present value is called, is the profit adjusted for time. That's how I like to think of it. And what it really is, is the present value of money in, actually let's put that in brackets, the present value of all the money that we take in minus the present value of all the money out. This might remind you of an equation of value. It really should. But here, they're not going to be equaling each other. They're going to be different. And that difference is the net present value. What we do is we take everything, I've just redrawn our timeline, and we move it back to the present value times zero, and we evaluate. And our question said that we value money at 10%. And unless you're told otherwise, we usually do this with effective rates because it makes sense that way. So what's the net present value of this guy? Well, it's going to be, I'm going to do this. This $20,000 is going backwards by one. Another $20,000 is going backwards by two years, three years, and four years. And yes, if you'd like, you can see this also. This is just the present value of an ordinary annuity. I'm just going to write down the whole thing so we can see it, that we are going to be also taking the present value of that $70,000. And that is not moving at all. I'm putting a zero, so it's really staying the same. So I'm just going to note that this bet is going to be N uh, $20,000 positive. Future value is negative. It's an ordinary annuity at 10% for four years, and everything is effective. So we can evaluate this with our calculator, and I would really do that instead of doing it by hand. Here, once I dump this into my calculator, and I would love for you guys to do this at the same time, pause, try it, I get $63,397.31. I'm going to subtract that $70,000 and I end up with a net present value of negative $6,602.69. A negative number. You should look at that and say, hey, I don't want negative values. That means at 10% interest, we are not making a profit. So I'm going to just say positive is good. I'm just going to turn off the calculator for now because we don't need it. This investment is not nearly as good as a 10% return, but however, this all relies on that 10%. So what if I had asked you for the same question? Oops. What if we only wanted a 5% return? What about 2%? What about 18%? Our net present value relies very heavily on that return, on that 10%. And we have a name for that. That is called the MARR, or Minimum Annual Rate of Return. 
So what I've said when I said we require 10% is we need at least a 10% return on our business in order to invest. Another way to say this is we could get 10% somewhere else. If it doesn't earn at least 10% per year, we won't even consider it. This leads us to another tool, and this is called the internal rate of return. And that is also called the IRR. You can note that there's also an IRR button on your calculator. We are definitely going to learn that. I've got some key phrases for IRR. One of them is the actual rate, what we're getting. Another way to think of it is the rate at which a net present value equals zero. So let's look at our expression. Going back to that algebra question we had before, now we have something, all of our expression, 20,000 over 1 plus i, plus 20,000 over 1 plus i squared, etc., etc., all minus 70,000 equals zero. This is a hard problem. The one I've drawn is technically solvable because it is a polynomial of degree 4 or a quartic. Once we get bigger than degree four, and we're gonna look at businesses that might last for 20 years, 100 years even. Once that N, that number of time gets really big, this is a very hard algebra problem. So always use a calculator or computer. There's going to be videos about how to do this in both your BA2 Plus calculator and using Excel, and look at those methods and use them. To solve these problems, you use approximation methods, which are going to give you more accurate results than we can do otherwise.